Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of creating an account system with Node.js. Just as a refresher, in part one, all I did was create a signup page, which would collect our account data, then send an API request over to our server. Our server would then sanitize that data to check if an account already exists, and then save that account in our database if it passes. And in this video, part two, I'll actually create the login system and maybe even a simple profile page to denote that we're logged in. If you guys are coming back here from the last video, I would assume that you are appreciating this tutorial. So if you could leave a like and even subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you if you do. Now that that's out the way, let's get started. So I'm gonna need to start up this project by taking in that file path, CDing into that file path, and then running nodemon server.js. You guys probably already know what that does from the last server. It just restarts the project every single time we make a code update. The sign up and login flow is pretty much going to be the same exact thing. Only thing is that the login page should collect only the username and password, and then we send that over to the server. The server would then do the work to actually create a login session. That said, we're going to be creating our login page. Like I said in the last video, I'm assuming you already understand HTML, so I don't really need to explain this code too much. I'll explain this JavaScript in a second though, but first, I want to make sure that we can actually send out this login page. All I'll be doing is copying the signup route, pasting it down here, changing the route to login. Then instead of sending out the signup.html file, I'll be sending out the login.html file. And then if we go over to that page, localhost port 3000 slash login, we'll see our login.html page. Now I'll explain this JavaScript down here. This is pretty much the exact same as when we created signup.html. Like we've done in signup.html, we would collect the username input value, and then we'd also collect the password input value. We would store those values inside of an object, but I should rename this to login data because reg data meant registration data. Update that here too. Once we have collected the username and password input values, we would send that data over to our API at slash login. We didn't create that route, but we'll do that right now. Like we saw, it's going to be a post request. So app.post quotation slash API slash login. And like usual, passing in our function with repres. And then I'll be doing the same flow up here. Var result equals response with the default of false. Adding our try catch. E being our error. And then sending out our JSON response result. Again, this flow is going to be the exact same as our signup flow, but instead of creating an account, we'll be creating a login session. Let's start off with some sanitization. We want to be sure that this login request actually does include the username and password data. Var username equals request.body.username, because this API request should have sent out that username. Same thing for var password equals request.body.password. Now to check if this username is actually sent, we can do this. If not username, throw missing username. This just checks if the username is undefined or empty. If it is undefined or empty, obviously there's no name. We would want to report this in the client the same way we do up here, so I'll just copy that in. Basically, if we caught an error, which is just a string, we're gonna tell the user that they're missing a username. We'll check that right now by sending an empty username there you go, missing username. And if we do put in a name, we don't get that error. Pretty much do the same thing down here. If not password, throw missing password. If we send an empty password, it says missing password. Send in a password, we don't get that error. I actually didn't do this up in sign up, but we should have done it. I'll do that right now. If not request.body.username throw missing username. Then we would do the same thing for the password and email. At this point, we would want to check if an account even exists with that username. Conveniently, we've already made code that does that in the signup handler. So we can just copy this and paste that down here. We can rename this to account data to make some more sense out of it. As we already know from part one of this tutorial, we know that this would search inside of our accounts collection inside of our database, but it will only find one document that has a username of whatever we passed in, request.body.username. We've already assigned request.body.username inside of a variable, so we can just reuse that variable down here to make it look a little cleaner. If this did find a result, then it would return with that document. If there is no document, then we know that an account doesn't exist. That said, we can just do if not account data, then throw no account exists with that username. Because we did use await, we will of course need to use async. Let me correct that typo. 
Now let's try it out with the username that we know exists, Ada. I'll enter in Ada, log in, unknown error, meaning it passed. Put in a username that shouldn't exist and put in a password so it doesn't tell us password missing and click on login. As we expected, no account exists with that username because no account does exist with that username. Because this account system is username centric, I'm going to be deleting the extra documents that were used as tests in the sign up tutorial. I'm also going to be deleting documents that were introduced prior to creating our hashed passwords. Let me log this data to the console so I can show you a little something. So I'll just log in again so I can get that in the console. And as we can see, the account data is just an object containing the username, password, and email. Basically, the document. Now that we know how to get the password from the account document, we can assign that to a variable var account pass equals acc data dot password. Now that we have the actual account password and the tried password, we can start to compare them to see if they match. But we can't just straight up do if account pass is equal to password because the password that we send out here is plain text. Meanwhile, the password that we store in the database is hashed. What you could do is just hash that password again and then compare it to the database's password. But Bcrypt actually has something even better that you can do, the compare method. You should use this because it counters timing attacks. Basically, this is better in terms of security. To check with Bcrypt, we do it like this. Our password matched equals bcrypt.compare. The first parameter should be the plain text password, which was this. And then the second parameter should be the already hashed password, which was the password stored in the database, being account pass. And then the third parameter would be a callback function. But I realized after reading the documentation that if you just cut out the callback function, then it would just be a promise with the first parameter being hash. That said, all we had to do is do a wait to make this synchronous. You could have actually done that up here inside of our signup handler too. You just take this, cut out the callback function, var hashed pass equals await, bcrypt.hash, password, salt rounds of 10, so it will remain synchronous. Back down here, we can check if not password matched, then throw password is incorrect. Now if we try logging in with an incorrect password, it should say the password is incorrect. But if we use the correct password, unknown error, so we know that the password matched. Now that we know that the person has sent the correct password for this account, we can actually create their login session. This is where things get a little bit complicated, so let's get on it. To create sessions, we're going to be using the package express session and the package connect mongo. Let's begin by importing session. We'll also import the connect mongo package, but slightly differently. So we'll name it mongo store re equals require connect mongo, but also another set of parentheses passing in our session package. Now let's use express session as middleware for express. So app.use session, and then the first parameter should be an object with options. I'm just going to use options that I feel are necessary for this simple project. If you are going to go production, I would recommend reading through the express session documentation because there is some stuff you'll want to know. First option we'll need is a secret. You can set that secret to anything. I'm just going to do that. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what secret is for. I just know that you need to. We're going to need to pass in our store, which is just going to be the database storage. So store, set that equal to new Mongo store. First parameter being an object with the mongoose connection, set that equal to mongoose.connection. This basically reuses the connection that we created down here, so that saves a bit of resources. We'll also set auto remove to native. The next option to set would be name, which is going to be your session identifier's name, a cookie, more on that later. Just pick a name you feel would be appropriate. I'll say my website sec, my website security. Set safe uninitialized to false. This would prevent every single visitor from being identified as a session. Basically, you have to create a session for it to be a session. Set rolling to true, so this will make your expired date rolling. So say your expired date is in seven days. If you were to wait three days, your expired date will be in four days. But if you revisit the site, your expired date will be reset to in seven days again. Set resave to true so this expired date will also update on the database, not just the cookie. And then set cookie to an object. If you're going to be using this in production, I would recommend using HTTP only true. 
This presents cross-site scripting in the sense that you can't do console.log document.cookie. I'd recommend reading up on this and you can't use this in development. So if you use it on localhost, it's just not going to work. So I'll just remove that. I'm going to set domain to localhost, but if you are going to upload this to a website, you'd want to set this to your website's domain. So say your website's domain is mywebsite.com. You would instead put mywebsite.com and maybe even add a dot in the beginning to make it accessible to all subdomains. Again, I'm running this on localhost, so I'm going to leave it on localhost. We'll also want to set max age. This is the time in milliseconds until when this cookie should expire. And once this cookie expires, a session is expired. So if you want the login session to be valid for one year, the math would be 1000 milliseconds times 60 for minutes, times 60 again for hours, times 24 again for days, and then times 365 to make it a full year. Then this should be all you need for that session handling middleware. Thanks to that new middleware, we now have a new key inside of request, which is request.session. Because we know that the username and password is correct, we can create a new session for them. So request.session. But then we also want to know what account the session is for. We can assign the key UID and then set that equal to account data, which is what we grabbed up here. Like we remember, it returns this document. We can grab their ID. Set it equal to dot underscore ID. And that value will just be this part right here. Once that's done, they now have a session created for them, which we can use to determine whether or not they're logged in and what account they are logged in with. That's pretty much everything. So now we can say result.success equals true. So that would tell our login the HTML to alert success. I'm using a plugin called edit this cookie to see what cookies are used on this page. And as we can see, there are no cookies here. Once I log in, I expect a new cookie to be created named my website sec. So let's try logging in. We see success. And if you look, we now have a new cookie, my website sec. This cookie here pretty much identifies our device. So now let's try something out. Request.session.uid, then throw, you are already logged in. So if we try logging in, it throws this error, which pretty much tells them they're already logged in. Why do you need to try logging in again? Now let's try creating a simple profile page. It's not gonna be much at all. I'm just gonna have it display their username and their email, but I'm not going to be using HTML files to create pages because that's static. Instead, I'm going to be using a templating engine called EJS, which basically is using HTML to create pages, but we can also pass in data from our server to create a dynamic page, which probably doesn't make sense right away, but once you see how it works, I'm sure you'll understand. First off, we're going to set view engine with this app dot set the first parameter view engine, second parameter EJS because we already installed the EJS package. So this should work out. We'll also do app dot set views to dot slash pages. So now we'll be creating a new folder pages and create a new file profile dot EJS. I'll explain this in a second. And now let's create a profile route. So app.get slash profile, the usual request res arrow function. So you know how in our other routes, we would just send our HTML files with send file. We will now instead do res.render. First parameter should be a view path. We set our views directory to be pages. So if we want to send out profile.egs, we would do profile.egs. But if you added another folder, lol, and then put profile inside of there, we would just do lol forward slash profile.egs. But I'm gonna keep it clean and not do that. That was just an example. And then the second parameter should be an object. This is just going to be data that we send over to our templating engine. So for example, Username, we are devs. And let me show you how that would work. So say p hello, do this, and then just do username. So what this will do is look for this object and then look for the key username and output that. I don't want to explain EGS too much because there is a lot to go through. I would just read through this documentation. You don't really have to use EJS though, it doesn't matter. If you really want to, you can use static HTML, but then do API requests to collect data. So if we go over to our profile route, you'll see, hello, we are does renders. And if we just put anything else, It'll do just that. Of course, what we want to send instead is the logged in user's username and the logged in user's email. First off, we want to check if they're even logged in, and we can do that like so. If not, request.session.uid, then return a redirect. So res.redirect slash login. Basically, this checks if a session even has a UID key. 
A UID key would only ever be set if they have successfully logged in. If they haven't successfully logged in, they don't have a UID. So then we would just redirect them over to the login page. So just to show you that that works, I'm actually going to create a logout route. So what this will do here is check if they're logged in. If they're logged in, then we will destroy the session and then redirect them to the login page. So if we head over to logout, we should be immediately redirected to login, as you can see. And then if we try going over to profile, it redirects us back to login because we're not logged in. If we do log in, we'll get success. At that point, we can go to profile and you see hello AFWAF because we still haven't programmed it to actually show our real username. Now let's try fetching their username. We can just reuse this code right here. Paste that in. Because we have a wait, we're gonna want to add async. But instead of filtering by username, we'll be filtering by ID. And our ID would be request.session.username. Thing is, we can't just straight up use request.session.uid. ID right now is an object ID. So what we'll need to get around that is go back up here, say const object ID equals mongoose.types.object ID. So now we can say var ID equals new object ID, pass in request.session.uid and replace this with the new ID that we got. Now it will appropriately filter for our session UID. At that point, we can actually grab our username from the account data. Var username equals account data dot username var email equals account data dot email so replace the static string with our username and like i said i wanted to display the email so pass that in too going back to our page i'll be creating a new line saying your email is colon and then we will want to output the email which will again be received from here then if we go over to profile, you'll see that it will successfully display your username and your email. There you go. You now have an account system. You've created a registration page, a login page, started creating login sessions, and now you can display dynamic data. So that pretty much concludes this tutorial. But just a reminder, this was a simple tutorial, almost bare minimum. This was only meant to give you a start. This isn't like all the best practices and everything. For one thing, you might want to add more sanitization to your signup page. For example, making sure that the usernames are as safe to display as HTML, because what if someone sets a script as their username and displays that? Someone can start hacking other their accounts or forcing people to go over to inappropriate web pages. You'll also want to add some kind of rate limiting or captures to prevent bots from spamming your database with thousands of new accounts per second. But again, this was only meant to give you a start and I hope I've helped out with that. Have fun expanding on top of this and if you do go production, please do more studies because with an account system, you're risking people's data. But if you're just going to be doing this as a learning experience, then by all means, do you. Maybe make something like Facebook's timeline or even create a friend system or a messaging system. Thanks for watching and bye.